Let's be honest, most of us know nothing about Switzerland and the depth of our knowledge about this wonderful country will be limited by praising of its cheese, chocolate and fondue. Of course, this trio is majestic and adding some local wine to the cheese will only make it better. Those are only cliches, like vodka, bears and balalaika. By the way, Swiss Ben's coat of arms also rocks a bear. And Bern's zoo has two bears, gifted by Dmitry Medvedev when he was the president of Russia. Switzerland is the first country in the world to declare itself neutral. It is the country with the cleanest water in the world and special care for the environment and nature. Four languages are official here and 25% of the population are foreigners. Geography. Switzerland is in the center of the Western Europe. It borders Germany in the north, Austria and Liechtenstein on the east, Italy in the south, France on the west. With the area of 1285 square kilometers, 220 kilometers in length and 348 kilometers in width, Switzerland is one of the smallest countries in the world. Despite small size, the country will delight you with its landscape. The Maggiore Lake is at the lowest elevation, 194 meters above sea level. The opposite side has 48 mountain peaks, each over 4,000 meters above sea level and covered in snow year-round. The De Forspitze Peak in the Wales Canton at 4,634 meters is the highest in Switzerland. Regions There are three main geographical regions in Switzerland. The Jura the Swiss Plateau and the Alps. The Alps cover 60% of Switzerland's territory. Although the Plateau is the economic center, it's the Alps that formed the country's identity. But only a part of the population lives in the Alpine regions of the many mountain passes, which are important transportation routes. Plateau is only 30% of Switzerland's area, but over two-thirds of the population and most of the cities are here. The region stretches from the Geneva Lake on the west to the Bodensee Lake on the east. Jura borders the plateau northwest and covers over 10% of the country's area. It's a limestone mountain range averaging 700 meters above sea level with a beautiful landscape crossed with river valleys. Nature Despite its small size, Switzerland has a surprising diversity of plants and animals around 46,000 different species. In 1994, Switzerland has signed the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. Several areas were declared protected due to their exceptional ecological importance and unique properties. Swiss National Park in Engadin in Graubünden Canton was founded in 1914 and has become the first national park in the Alps and is a part of the UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. Right now there are 19 Swiss parks that are officially protected by the government. The first federal law on protection of forests was adopted in 1876. The protection and management of forests since then play a central role. In mountainous countries like Switzerland, forests are vitally important since they protect from erosion, help stabilize the soil and prevent landslides and avalanches. Water Switzerland is the source for 6% of all Europe's fresh water resources. It is often called European Water Reservoir. The rivers Rhone and Ticino rise from here. The country has over 1,500 lakes. The Geneva Lake crossing the Franco-Swiss border is the largest in Western Europe. It is 582 square kilometers in area and 310 meters in deepest point, which makes it one of the deepest lakes in the European region. In the Middle Ages, it was an important trade route and many villages arose on its coasts. Near the Geneva Lake are several places of interest, including Judon, a fountain ejecting water 140 meters into the air, and the Chilean Castle. It is an ancient castle on a small natural island. I've been there in 2022 and made a separate episode about it, so if you want to check it out, link is in the description. If you love stories about the Middle Ages or are planning to visit Switzerland, I'm sure you'll be impressed by the Chilean like I was. 
the lake itself was an inspiration for many artists and writers, including Lord Byron, who wrote the Chilean prisoner poem after visiting the castle. The Geneva Lake is famous with its wines, especially white ones produced on the vineyards along its northern coast. Glaciers cover about 3% of Switzerland, the biggest of which is a latch 23 kilometers long. The Rhone Glacier is another popular one that you can find in the same canton. Unfortunately, climate change quickly leads to melting of Swiss glaciers, which raise concerns about countries' environment and tourism industry. Lakes and glaciers in Switzerland are very important for regular water flow from the mountains. Numerous dams and reservoirs ensure countries' steady supply of water for drinking, irrigation and electric power production. Switzerland is famous with its water quality. In Switzerland, water coming from the tap is as clean as bottled mineral water. Thanks to excellent water purification methods, you can swim in any Swiss lake without worrying about contamination. Total water consumption in Switzerland is about 300 liters per person, taking into account households, industry and manufacturing enterprises. Energy Energy consumed in Switzerland comes from a variety of sources. 49% of energy needs are covered by crude oil. 24% are electric, 14% gas, and 12% are other energy sources. 22% of Switzerland energy needs are produced with renewable sources. The country assists reaching the international climate goals with its CO2 Emissions Limiting Act. The law targets reduction of a different greenhouse emissions by 20% in comparison with 1990 levels. The Swiss population also endorsed the new law intending significant reduction in energy consumption and increase in energy efficiency by 2050. The encouragement of the renewable sources is directed towards reduction of Switzerland's dependence on imported energy sources. A decision has been made to gradually eliminate nuclear power, which means that five of Swiss nuclear power plants will be decommissioned when its lifetime comes to an end. Recycling The Swiss pay a great deal of attention to recycling waste. All country residents pay a tax on garbage disposal, which may come around to 300 francs per year. Residents sort the garbage themselves by throwing it into the appropriate containers. But they can also buy special marked bags, which will be sorted for you, but the tax will also be higher. Transit Switzerland is an important transit country. The railroad and automotive tunnel going through the Gotthard Past connection between Italy and Northern Europe. The new railroad across the Alps, NRLA, completed in 2020, will significantly offload the automotive cargo transport onto the trains. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is 57 kilometers long and it is the longest railroad tunnel in the world. The Great St. Bernard Pass is the main route between Western Switzerland and Italy. Federalism Switzerland has no official capital. Instead, it has a federal system of government and its political institutes are spread across several cities. However, Bern is considered the de facto capital, since it has many important government agencies, including the Swiss Federal Assembly. Switzerland is a federal state with three political levels – municipality, canton and federal government. The country has 26 cantons, 20 full cantons and 6 half cantons, and 2200 municipalities. Cantons and communes are largely autonomous. Every canton has its own constitutions, laws, parliament and courts. It is a decentralized power system and an effort to solve problems at the lowest level, known as the principle of subsidiarity. All of the Swiss citizens over 18 have the right to vote. They are invited three to four times a year to participate in the federal vote on 15 political topics. One of the tools of direct democracy is the people's initiatives, which give citizens the right to make constitutional amendments. 
Initiatives are put to a vote if they collect 100,000 signatures within 18 months. Facultative referendums. Citizens have the right to demand a law approved by the parliament to be put to a national vote. For a new law to be put to a vote, 50 hundred signatures have to be gathered within 100 days. Mandatory referendum. All of the constitutional amendments approved by the parliament must be put uh, to a countrywide vote. Voters also must approve memberships in organizations such as the European Union and the United Nations. Executive branch of the government and the parliament is represented by the Federal Council consisting of seven members, elected by the United Federal Assembly every four years. Federal Council manages seven departments or ministries, oversees the execution of federal law, develops new law projects and negotiates with other countries. The government sharing the power consists of four main political parties. Legislative branch is conducted by the Federal Assembly, divided into two chambers of equal status, which serve separately. The National Council represents the people and consists of 200 members. Every canton chooses deputies in proportion to their population. Foreign policy. Switzerland has the old tradition of international collaboration. It's a member of many international organizations. The European Free Trade Association, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Council of Europe, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, since 1975. Since 1992, Switzerland is a part of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. In 2002, Switzerland became the 119th member of the UN. Switzerland built its foreign policy on the principles of a rule of law, universality and neutrality. Geographical and cultural closeness of Switzerland to the European Union countries and its political ties require active policy in relationship with the EU. Switzerland's commitment to humanitarianism and a long tradition of a goodwill goes hand in hand with its neutral status. The International Committee of the Red Cross was founded by two Swiss men. Henri Dunon and Henri Dufour. It is headquartered in Geneva, the world's humanitarian capital, where you can also find the world's second largest UN headquarters, with its permanent representatives and delegations. Geneva is also a place for big international events. The Swiss Armed Forces is an army of militiamen, meaning that uh, the soldiers serve alongside uh, their um, training, studying and day jobs. Military service is mandatory for all men aged 20 to 34. Women serve on a voluntary basis. Languages. Switzerland has four national languages. Some are spoken more in certain regions than in others. 62% of our residents speak German in 17 cantons out of 26, where two-thirds of the population lives. And besides, there are a lot of Swiss-German dialects. In Western Switzerland, the main language is French, spoken by 22% of the population. Four cantons are exclusively francophone – Geneva, Vaux, Neuchâtel and Jura. Bern area is bilingual, with people speaking both German and French. Italian is the official language of Ticino and southern valleys of Graubünden. Another language spoken here is Romansh. Only half a percent of Swiss population speak it, which makes it the least widespread of the four national languages. Each of the four languages of a region in Switzerland has its own radio and and TV programs and a wide spectrum of newspapers and magazines. In addition to the official languages, a lot of Swiss residents also speak English, especially in large cities and business centers. Switzerland is homeland for a lot of language schools, which offer courses in a wide variety of languages, including German, French, Italian, English and others. Also, Switzerland has a solid choice of boarding school, located in the most picturesque of places. 
In many of them, children study in two languages – English and the Cantons language. If you're interested in camps, schools or universities of Switzerland, on the website smaps.com you can find the most comprehensive catalogue of local institutions. Swiss government is adherent to encouraging multilingualism and goes by the policy of providing all citizens with the possibility to learn and use more than one language. Encouragement of multilingualism is viewed as an important factor in retaining unity and cultural diversity, as well as the ability to participate in global economy. Migration Around 2.1 million foreigners live in Switzerland, comprising 25% of the population. One-fifth are born here, which means that they represent the second and third generation. In comparison with other countries, Switzerland has a relatively high percentage of foreigners. In the 20th century, the fraction of foreigners varied greatly, reflecting changes in the economy and labor market. At the end of the 1960s, the first wave of seasonal workers came from Italy. They were followed by workers from Spain, Portugal and Yugoslavia. Today, Italian citizens are the largest group of foreigners of 14.9% followed by the Germans, the Portuguese, the French and the Kosovans. The vast majority of foreign residents of Switzerland, 83% come from European countries. Switzerland's immigration policy is aimed at attracting qualified workers who contribute to the economy and society and at the same time help maintain their stability. In modern times, many immigrants come to Switzerland to work in highly qualified positions – finance, IT and, of course, healthcare. Switzerland has one of the highest percentages of foreign workers in the world – around one-third of the workforce. At the same time, Switzerland is not only a country of immigration, but also of emigration as well. Today, 750,000 of Swiss citizens live abroad. France has the most Swiss citizens, and then come Germany and the United States. Organization of the Swiss abroad also, and the Swiss foreign ministry look after the Swiss experts' interests. Swiss citizens living in another country can still vote in referendums and elections. Healthcare. Everyone living in Switzerland is required to have a medical insurance. The first federal law on medical and accidental insurance came into force in 1914. In 1996, it was replaced by a new federal law on medical insurance. In Switzerland, there are four practicing doctors per 1,000 citizens. Healthcare expenses are growing. In 2016, it constituted 12% of GPD and in 1990, it was 7%. The reason are extended range of services provided by the insurance, deeper specialization and technological achievements, and of course aging of the population. The Swiss pension system is known as the system of three pillars, first of which is the system of mandatory social insurance, insurance of reaching the pension age or of widows and orphans. Second component, professional pension scheme. It is mandatory for everyone employed. Employers and employees pay equal payments to the professional pension fund. It is a private insurance scheme which provides everyone the possibility to increase their retirement income. Switzerland's legal retirement age is 65 for men and 64 for women. The third component of the Swiss pension system is voluntary. It consists of individual forms of retirement savings. Every Swiss resident can make such payments on their own accord. There are a lot of options offered by private pension funds, large insurance companies and almost all Swiss banks. The government encourages such savings with significant tax incentives. Education Education, scientific research and innovations are the strategic assets which Switzerland needs to maintain its uh, current competitive advantage. Encouraging Switzerland as a knowledge-based economy is greatly important for ensuring social prosperity, country's stable development and its appealing status. As of today, 21 Swiss scientists have been awarded the Nobel Prize. Switzerland invests around 3.4% of its GPD in scientific research and development R&D. The private sector makes up over 60% of the R&D expenditures. One quarter is government-funded and the rest is mostly international investments. 
The above average amount of patents and scientific papers in Switzerland are the evidence of effective interaction between the state and private institutions. Switzerland is high in the list in these areas, releasing 148 patents per million of residents and 1.1% of the world's scientific papers. Most of the research is conducted in 10 cantonal universities and in two federal technological institutes in Zurich and Lausanne. The main content of the courses and scientific research are natural and engineering sciences, math and architecture. The applied research and development and converting knowledge into market innovations are mostly on the private sector and universities of applied science. They conduct the transferring between research labs and the market and in this way become an important link in the innovation chain. Switzerland has a decentralized education system and every of the 26 cantons is responsible for its own policy and education programs. Education is mandatory for kids aged 6 to 15. And many kids go to junior school for six years before going into middle school. Swiss education system is known for its professional training programs that give students skills and the knowledge necessary for success in a wide range of industries. These programs combine studying in class with studying in a real working production. And graduates of these programs proceed to successful careers in areas such as engineering, finance and healthcare. Switzerland is homeland for the world's leading universities, including the ETH Zurich Technological Institute and the Zurich University, which is in the world's top 100 universities. Education in Switzerland is available in four official languages – German, French, Italian and Romansh. Students can choose the language that is most convenient for them. Switzerland has a high percentage of foreign students – over 20% of universities students come from abroad. Switzerland's population is well educated, over 50% having higher education. If you're looking for a school or a camp in Switzerland or in any other place in the world, our experts will help you on our website maps.com. All the links and contacts will be in the description. Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button not to miss the next helpful episode.